He was killed at Mount Gilboa. Now the kingdom is becoming David. So David speaks to his mighty men. And he says, if anybody can conquer the Jesuits, and they're the ones that live here. And so what ended up happening, they, they are the ones that found a water shaft that went up into the city. So many places were built just like this. Look how far it is down. You see the bottom of the valley? Down there is where the water is. Not up here. So they, there was a shaft that went down. Some of David's mighty men saw where they came out. So David's mighty men climbed up the water shaft and conquered this. So do you mind if we just go through this again? No, you're fine. So David conquered this. It became the city of David. All right, then from there, David builds his palace up here. Where we are here is the palace. He wants to buy the flesh, uh, fleshing floor. <laughs> threshing floor that becomes the temple area, which is the highest point up here. Again, where'd they thresh wheat? At the highest point, so the wind will blow it away. So he buys that to build a house of the Lord. We know the Lord says, no, you're not gonna build me a house. But I'm, I'm going to build myself a house, and the Messiah is going to come through you. So David is up on his balcony here, looking over. There's a lady down there. What's her is name? Bathsheba. There she is. What's she doing? Sir? Taking a bath. You're missing out. You may want to come over here. <laughs> so we know the story of David and Bathsheba. So from that. The kingdom gets divided through Rehoboam, which we studied when we were at Caesarea Philippi. And Jeroboam takes the ten northern tribes, the two southern tribes. The northern tribes... Go ahead, You're, you can pass. The northern tribes have been conquered by the most brutal people known to mankind, the Assyrians. People would commit suicide rather than fall into their hands. They're under the command of Sennacherib, who has surrounded the city of Jerusalem. Sennacherib's camp's right over here, right opposite of the city of David. Hezekiah's king of, Jeru of, is or of Judah, of Jerusalem. Sennacherib's men, who had never been defeated. Okay, your elder, though. Nobody had ever withstood the Assyrians are calling out in Hebrew what they're going to do to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And Isaiah the prophet speaks to King Hezekiah not to give up. God is going to miraculously deliver them. In the time that Sennacherib was coming, and they knew it was coming, it was a huge problem. The problem was how to safely bring water into the city. So they began to build what is Hezekiah's tunnel. So some of you are going to go through dry, we're going to go through wet. But this tunnel is carved out of solid rock from this side of the mountain <coughs> to this side of the mountain to bring fresh water into this city. This tunnel does not go straight. It's a miracle of God. The tunnel snakes back and forth. People started on this side. People started on this side. Snaking back and forth. And they met pick to pick. Is that not amazing? No. It's a miracle. Because you will see when you get in there, it, <coughs> it, it snakes back and forth. They didn't have the technology. Water was brought into the city. The city withstood the assault of the Assyrians. God did the miracle in Hezekiah's time where 185,000 Assyrians who had surrounded the city of Jerusalem were killed by an angel of the Lord. Sennacherib goes back to Nineveh. That's why Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. You know, they hated the Assyrians. They were brutal, terrible people where his own sons kill him. But here, to me, there's so many things from King David, that's why this is called the city of David. And again, the city of David in the beginning encompassed this peninsula 
and you can see how protecting it would be. You build walls on this, look, you're totally protected on all sides. So it's a miraculous story. We're walking the pages of the Bible. So this movie that we see helps you to 3D understand this. So as we go, and when, as when we get ready to go, we'll go all the way down. Hezekiah's coming with them. And then it comes out to the pool of Siloam, which we come back to Jesus this time. You get tired? Yes? <coughs> No, no. We just covered thousands of years, you know. We went from King David and the Je Jebusites to Jesus. I remember the impression I had the first time I was here. Hopefully, maybe we'll get a chance to go up or not. I don't know. But if you stand up just a little bit higher, you're standing like in the place that David was when he saw Bathsheba. And when you read the story, it's hard in your mind's eye to figure out how that actually happened. But when you stand there, you're like, oh, no doubt. This makes sense. It's easy to understand. He was standing right here. You could see all the neighbors. You could see the whole area. And he could very easily have seen Bathsheba right there. If she was a half mile away, he could have saw her. A quarter mile away, he would have saw her. And then this hill on the other side over here, this is the Arab quarter. So that's where all the, that's the, on the, on the opposite side of the Kidron Valley. Okay, we can go. I don't have one. No, I do